You see the captains meeting out there at midfield. We're about under uh, getting things started here for our second game. Full slate uh, here today at Burgess Snowfield. Again, Evangel Christian Lions out of Montgomery and Evangel Christian Lightning out of Alabaster. A little story, uh, John, a few years ago, I took a break from broadcasting, tried to help an eight-man football team near home, and uh, we went on uh, the road to Alabaster, took on Evangel Christian School. I was calling plays, so we got to be 34 to 14, and uh, it really wasn't that close. But um, they have had a great eight-man program, and, and it's good to see these guys step it up. And uh, they have really you know, a good supply of uh, athletes, so looking forward to seeing the two uh, teams out here. I, I think that um, watching uh, Evangel out of uh, Montgomery in that uh, opener, they really were an athletic crew, uh, not only uh, Jones, but they had uh, – a great run in there as well from some of the other players and very athletic. Uh, so it's going to be fun to watch these two teams go at it. Yeah, you can't tell uh, always a lot by teams warming up. But as I walked into the stadium this morning and watching Evangel Montgomery warming up, I had the same impression you did. I said they don't have very many, but the ones they have are pretty big and physical and strong and athletic. So we've seen them play a game, but this, they've got some fresh legs now, does Evangel Alabaster. This will be their first action. And they look like a pretty athletic team as well. I agree with you, Tommy. This should be a, a good matchup here at JSU. Alabaster going to open up offensively. Again, the quarterback Murphy takes the snap. He'll keep it around the right end, got some speed, turns a corner, breaks a tackle, slips down across the 40, and he'll slide down at about the 43-yard line. But we talked about Murphy in the pregame. Very athletic quarterback, shows it right here. Slips, and uh, or he could have still been running for a while, but a good gain there on first down. Second down and about eight, uh, check a second and a couple to go. Evangel working out of the huddle, something you don't see a lot in today's game as they actually form a huddle and then break out of it. We didn't see any of that in the game last night between Ben Russell and James Clemens. Murphy on the option. He'll knife his way to the 45 and pick up the first down. Just read the option down the line, cut it back in, only needed a couple to rattle the chains, and he's able to do that. We saw something last night in the James Clemens game, though, just because you're maybe a hurry up no huddle team does not mean that you can't control the clock they burned a lot of time off the clock and we're seeing now uh, I, I like the huddling up because I'm a traditionalist and so uh, one of the things that allows you to do with a slower pace is control the clock and control that time of possession and so far that seems to be kind of the strategy here for Evangel Alabaster rolling to his left Murphy's got some pressure flips it out there and just cannot connect with his receiver down the field. He had uh, intentions of hitting Windsor, who had slipped out from his tight end spot, but threw it just a little bit behind him. It brings up second down at 10. Windsor was wide open, had a little bit of pressure coming, and that may have had the pass sell on him just a little bit. Windsor's a big guy, plays a little tight end, plays a little H back. He has that look to him. He's one of those guys that can play a number of positions for you. He can play tight end, can go out and play a little bit at wide receiver, can be that H back, can be a full back, blocking back. I would imagine they probably even put him in the tail sometimes as a as a single setback and play him a little bit at, uh, at tailback. Only a sophomore. Murphy on the give. That's Baggett tries the left side. He will fight his way out to the 48-yard line. Gain of about three. Going to bring up a third down and seven. Good blocking on the left side, but also the defense there to fill the spot. So good play by the Lions defense as well. And they do take their time. There's no question about that. They are not in a hurry. They they huddle up. They walk to the line and they uh, snap the ball with about five seconds to go on the play clock. Quarterback keeper all the way coming around the corner. First down and more. And Murphy will take it down to about the 38 yard line. Michael Murphy showing some of his athleticism. Gets to the corner, picked up a good block, eluded three defenders. And as you see there, nice little spin move and picked up some extra yards. Nice looking run there by Micah Murphy, the quarterback from Evangel Alabaster. As we mentioned, he rushed for over 1,400 yards last year. So very comfortable carrying the football and just an athletic quarterback. First down of 10, marked at about the 38-yard line for the Lightning. Ball is on the near hash at the 38. Two split outs go to the left. Two will come to the near side. 
Good look there at Micah Murphy. Motion man is back, and he'll take the snap, go to the left side, and be tracked down. Good defense on the perimeter. They've got a flag coming in that pops in late. We'll have to wait and get the indication there from the official, but I don't know if Murphy was supposed to hand it to Baggett, but uh, the timing worked out where Baggett just basically fielded the snap and kept running. Face mask going to be the call. Zion Jones did a really good job of blowing up that play. He didn't make the tackle that time, but he totally disrupted what was happening back there. And uh, unfortunately, a face mask called against Evangel Montgomery. Zion Jones must be in great shape because he, he ran up and down the, the field in the first game and now uh, getting it done on defense here in the second setting. Murphy. Keeper right side, splits defenders, and he's off to the races. 25-yard line, 20, 15, 10, and he will be knocked out of bounds by Jones. But I'm going to tell you a little Houdini action there for Murphy. He comes out, splits those two defenders there, and then gets to the boundary and shows his speed. Great run by Micah Murphy. He'll say he steps out at about the six-yard line. It'll be first down and goal. Winds up being about a 22-yard run. Breaks a couple of tackles, gets into the open field, shows good speed, and knocked out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. So we talked about having maybe the fresh legs with a Evangel Alabaster as uh, we'll have a timeout being called here by yeah. Evangel Alabaster. Murphy limping just a little bit after that play, took his helmet off, and coaches did, uh, hey, let's just give a timeout rather than try to give Murphy a chance to gather his thoughts and go back in there. But it looks like he may have to come out for a play. And uh, we're going to counter with Wyatt Rickles, a freshman, as they will. Looks like change at quarterback. But great run that time by Murphy. But uh, as he took a tumble down there. And one of the things, Tommy, that w that is very unique to spring games, and especially a spring game where you're kind of playing around robin like this, is in a situation like this where you're going to have, uh, there's the Jackson High School Golden Eagle team. They're already here, arriving, getting ready to play handily coming up to the game after next. But talking a little bit about uh, you got one team that's played an entire mm -hmm. two quarters. They played a half of football. And then you've got a team that's going to come in and play that team again. And they're fresh. Right. And it's always interesting to see how that dynamic works out, especially in the spring when you may not be in the best condition that, like you would be in the fall. Rickles with a shotgun look. He'll hand it off Baggett, and not a lot of success on the left. Big play in there by number 90. That is Oakley Williams, the junior defensive end, as he comes crashing in. Fights through defenders, and he's going to bring him down there. So not a lot of running room. And Murphy going to check back in now. Great penetration that time by... Evangel Montgomery, Oakley Williams, Zion Jones, we call his name again. Both of those guys waiting in the backfield really from the time of the handoff. And again, you know, a very patient Evangel Alabaster team. We've been watching the play clock, and Tommy, they typically don't snap the football until about four to six seconds left on the play clock. Murphy fakes to bag it, rolls out, got pressure, rolls, continues to get away from defenders, and he's going to go in the corner of the end zone. Looked like they had him hemmed in a couple of times, but Murphy. Just a pure athlete. You see him slip the tackle right there away from Greg Taylor and then get to the corner. And the Lightning are on the board. 6-0, 622 left here in the first. Greg Taylor had a shot at him. Carlos Brown had a shot at him. When he got past those two defenders, you see him slip past Brown right there. It was nothing but green turf as he walks into the end zone. Actually lost his shoe there, it looks like, as he came into the end zone. Looked like Cody Blanchard out here on the old Burgess Snowfield getting to the corner of the end zone there. Now, extra point by Murphy. There will be no rush. Baggett will put it down. Gets a snap, and Murphy's kick is too low. And the score remains 6 to nothing here with 6.22 left in the first. Good time, maybe, Tommy, to go over some of the uh, rules there. The kicking is not live. You can attempt not only extra points, you can attempt a field goal, but there's no live rush to that and, and no blocking as we take a look at the Tony Sarah Ford scoring drive. Nine plays, 65 yards, 338 off the clock. And a lot of the damage being done by Micah Murphy, senior quarterback for the Lightning. 
We'll get a look now at uh, the Lions out of Montgomery who had an awful lot of offensive success in the opener against Kingwood. Zion Jones, the sophomore running back, 5'10", 203, and he is a good-looking athlete, and he was able to really, really have some explosive plays in that first couple of periods. And they were very explosive in the first quarter of that last half as uh, they rolled up 32 points. So let's see if the offense continues here against Evangel Alabaster. Alpert, the quarterback, gives it off to Jones. He's hitting the backfield. He's going down. Penetration that time, led by number 44, John Lloyd. He's a sophomore as well. And I'll tell you what, future is bright for this Evangel team. Meeting him in the hole, though, starting him off was Logan Smith. And then, as we said, Lloyd finishes him off. Smith. Loss of a couple of yards. Smith just unblocked there, actually loses a yard does Evangel Montgomery. Smith lining up at a defensive tackle. They'll send Jones in motion handoff and there's Smith again. In the broadcasting world, a friend of mine, we always have the rule, if you have a defensive lineman with a number in the 30s or the 20s, be aware, he's gonna be very quick. And uh, you see right there, Logan Smith, a couple of great plays as he's able to get through and make some things happen. Logan Smith is listed as a defensive end, and he plays there. Not the biggest guy in the world, but he has got a very great quick first step, and he's been able to plug the hole and get in the gap. First two times, that first two plays here that Evangel Montgomery snapped the football, he's just shedded the blocks and been right there in the backfield. They'll sweep it to Jones trying to get to the outside. Slips through one defender. We're going to be brought down at the 40-yard line. Be shy of the first down. And it's going to bring a fourth down at about five. You see Jones with great speed, but great play in the secondary to get off the blocks and come up and make the stop. And Davis Windsor in pursuit there from his middle linebacker position, providing some help there, tracking him down the line. Fourth down, though, and uh, another one of the rules, if you're just joining us, especially maybe the folks from Evangel Alabaster, is there will not be any live punting. There will they'll be kicks. There will not be live kicks, as we mentioned. You can't attempt extra points. You can't attempt field goals, but there's no live blocking or uh, rush on that, but as far as punting, there is no punting at all allowed. Basically, if you elect to punt, they just move the ball 35 yards down the field. So with that punt, that'll put the ball at the 25-yard line. Also, no overtime whatsoever. Only one timeout allowed per quarter for each team and uh, two minutes between quarters, and then they're treating the quarters, the, at least they have been, the quarters as halves, Tommy, so there'll be a change of possession in the halves, not like a quarter. They'll treat it like a – so think of these as first halves and second halves instead of first quarters and second quarters. Another look at the Evangel Alabaster offense. Micah Murphy back in shotgun formation. He'll keep it left side, turns the corner. Murphy – Still running all the way out to had an official take a tumble over there across the way, but they'll mark it at the 38-yard line. I'm going to tell you, this guy's got deceptive speed. Several times it looks like they've got him, and Murphy kicks it into another gear. As you see him circle around there and get past Gill, who's a great athlete in his own right. Well, we see why he put up the numbers he put up last year. He had something like uh, a bunch of yards, 1,400 yards passing. And uh, he was also a very efficient runner. It appears to me, Tommy, from what we've seen so far, he may be their best running back yes. at the quarterback position and maybe the best athlete on the team, which usually quarter coaches will want to put their best athlete at quarterback. And it looks like that's what Evangel Alabaster has done here with Micah Murphy. First down and 10, Murphy screens it out to the outside to Baggett. Baggett slips a tackle. 45-yard line, spun down and... Looked like a face mask call, but they will let that one go by and bag it on the reception. Once he misses uh, the initial defender there, he's able to bring it down, but a good tackle there. You see, I, I was thinking it was a face mask for Jones, but he had the jersey there. Good tackle. Bag it with a nice move after he caught that uh, screen pass, and then he goes down the field and pretty good little stiff arm that he put on the Evangel Montgomery defender to carry him and get an extra three or four yards. Great shot by our camera crew there to get a look at that. Caveman Tony Castaneda catching the action here on the near sideline. Murphy again with a give. Bobble and Baggett 
gets back on it at the 45 yard line. Well, like a good connection between the quarterback and running back, but that back, he just lost control of the football. There was no defender in the area. Just lost the ball, bounded right back into his hands, though, and actually wound up picking up three or four yards. Just dribbling it down the floor there. And again, <laughs> it brings up a second down at about seven for the Lightning. Here at Burgess Snowfield, a beautiful, beautiful day. And you and I were talking last night. I, I don't know that you've got a more beautiful setting for football than uh, you've got here with the mountains in the background and the campus in full view from this uh, angle as well. It is a beautiful, beautiful setting. Murphy takes the snap. He'll keep it left side. Tries to bounce it around Gill and does. 45-40. My goodness, he keeps escaping and continues to hammer his way inside the 30-yard line. Tell you what, so many times it looks like he has nowhere to go, but he finds some escapability. You see here, keeping it in bounds. Takes a big hit, but continues to power. He is a fun quarterback to watch. Johnny Manziel of Al Alabaster, apparently Micah Murphy, a really great speed. I think that's the big thing, his ability to get to the corner. And we see him get to the corner and have a lot of success. But the thing we've seen on both of these initial drives here from Evangel Alabaster is the fact when he's not scared to take a lick, he'll actually, uh, he'll actually get down and uh, take a lick and give a few licks as he goes down the sideline there. 34 is on the sideline. That's for Evangel Montgomery. Deshaun Powell going to the sideline with an injury, looking at him on the near side. Murphy flips it in the flats, catches made to the 20, 15, 10, and down inside the five-yard line. That time, John Lloyd hauls it in, and Evangel Alabaster knocking on the door again. Just slipped out from his wide receiver spot. And Lloyd is only a sophomore, and that's a good-looking athlete as well, John. Well, you get so concerned, and I think we saw that there with Evangel Montgomery. You get so concerned with Murphy's running ability that you kind of sneak up and cheat up, and then all of a sudden he finds somebody wide open in the flat and throws it over your head, and you've got a big gainer back down inside the 10-yard line. Two very good initial drives here by Evangel Alabaster. They have been very impressive on their two opening drives of this game. Murphy. Fakes to Baggett, rolls left, got pressure there, comes back, flips it in the end zone too high. Tried to find Lloyd again as he was, Murphy looked to be just improvising. I believe that was going to be the quarterback keeper, but again, as he rolled back around, looked in the end zone for Lloyd, but they could not connect, and it's going to bring up second and goal. Tommy, to be a good improviser at quarterback, you've got to have great awareness of where people are, where you are on the field. You've got to be obviously cool, and he had great awareness of where he was, where the defenders were, where his wide receivers were, and that, that tells you he's got a great, vast uh, knowledge of the playbook and knowing where these guys are going to be and a good connection with his receivers. Now a power set. Murphy, quarterback keeper, didn't get there. Good penetration on the front line there. There is a battle down in the trenches. And that time, Evangel Montgomery able to win that battle and timeout called for by the Evangel Alabasters coaching staff. They'll try to discuss things here, facing third down and goal from the one. That time it was kind of a power eye look that time, something we haven't seen when they got into the goal line situation. So we will come back and it will be a third down and goal situation and they're going to set the ball right there on the goal line as it is still a warm day. You have to remember for most of these teams they only have about 10 days of spring practice. It's not like the old days where you had a whole month to practice basically spring football practice in this day and time Tommy is down to about two weeks. It really is for a lot of schools and then uh, we talked about it uh, yesterday as far as uh, teams playing baseball and different things that uh, the sports are taking longer. A lot of schools are only getting maybe a week uh, and they're happy to get three or four days. It, it's been a, it's really tough to, to work in, especially if you've got a lot of kids that play many sports. The coach from Ray County, Tennessee, Mark Pemberton last night in their game with Oxford after the game told us he had 15 players that right. were missing for various reasons, injuries and sports and things like that. 15 good players, he said, uh, that would uh, contribute to the team. So it's a little bit different in the spring as they go back to this uh, power eye set. Murphy under center. This time, give us to Baggett, and he will power his way in on the right side. Good blocking up front. 
Baggett gets the score, and it's a 12 to nothing lead for Evangel Alabaster. Good push over on the right side, and a good block you see there. Luke Sanders, sophomore tight end. As he, he's able just to seal his man off and get a little gap. Looks like Evangel will go for it. They're going to try the extra point again. They are allowed to obviously do two-point conversions if they choose, but the extra point is not live. No blocking and no live rush. This time, Murphy's kick. He gets all of it that time. May have shanked the first one, but he makes up for it here. And he'll give Evangel a 13-0 lead. And again today, Tommy, I believe that uh, we do have some schools that bring their cheerleaders. Some schools don't. And uh, we're going to have some... Uh, we're going to have some T-shirts to give out a little bit later on via the cheerleaders. Looking forward to that. You see the Tony Sarah Ford scoring drive. Nine plays, 75 yards, 256 off of the uh, clock. And I'm going to tell you, this uh, Evangel Alabaster team, they have been able to put together a couple of good scoring drives, and they, they've got a lot of weapons offensively. Talk about teams being in midseason form. This uh, Evangel Alabaster team is a team that – uh, they look pretty sharp, Tommy. They look like they're uh, in a fall jamboree instead of a spring jamboree. They've come out here on their first two possessions just with a little bit of warm-up, and they have been very efficient offensively, mainly because of their fine quarterback, Micah Murphy. Everything we heard about him, all the stats we read about him, easy to see why he had a big season last year and going to have a big 2016 fall campaign as well. Banjo Montgomery with a chance to get on the board. They'll try to get their offense going. Jones. In the backfield with Alpert. It's Jones. He gets a call right side. Here at the line of scrimmage. Struggles forward for a yard, and he's going to be driven back. Once again on the stop, Logan Smith leads the charges again from that defensive tackle spot. And Jones just unable to get on track, but also good play on the inside that time by Luke Moore. I think we've called Logan Smith's name just about every time that Evangel Montgomery has snapped the football. He's been there. Second down and about eight. Evangel Montgomery has to be wondering. At this point in the first game, they were already in the end zone several times, but they're unable to get into Evangel territory. Back to passes, Albert. Down the middle he goes. Going to be tipped away. An incomplete pass intended out here. For Anthony Gill, brings up third down. Big number 36, Davis Windsor got his paw in there and knocked it away. Probably would have been a completed pass for a first down if it's not knocked away by Windsor. Unable to get anything going on the ground. They'll face a third down at about eight for the Lions. Alpert, Jones in the backfield. Now they'll split Jones out, bring Gill into the set. Plenty of time on the play clock. Albert drops back. He's looking. Going to throw it deep. Got a man down there, but it's going to be picked off. Not able to get enough on it, and it's going to be intercepted there. Good coverage by Luke Bayless. As Albert threw it for all he was worth. But Bayless in coverage, able to bring that one in, and he'll fall at about the 35-yard line. So a turnover back to Evangel Alabaster. Excellent coverage. Look in that secondary. Everybody's covered. Three or four blue jerseys in the area. And now a turnover. And for the third time already in this first quarter, we're going to see another offensive possession by Evangel Alabaster. They are two for two as far as scoring drives. And here's possession number three coming. And we look for more of Micah Murphy. As goes Murphy, that's the way we're going to see Evangel Alabaster going. Only 15 seconds left here in this first period. As Evangel Alabaster will come to the line, he'll split out three to the near side. Murphy drops back. Got a flag on the play, but wow, what an arm. Throws it down there. The catch is made and knocked out of bounds. No, breaks the tackle. That is Baggett. He scrambles into the end zone, but I'm afraid this one's coming back. But what a play by Baggett to rip the football away and then escape the tackle. But I believe there was movement in the interior for Evangel Alabaster. So a great play may be coming back. But I'll tell you, Murphy shows a great arm there as well. Eagle Eagle motion, so that's going to come back. And of the two games we saw last night and 
of the two games that we've seen here so far today, that's probably been the best play we've seen mm -hmm. in the last 24 hours. Just an outstanding play to the football. And then to somehow not only snag the football, but then escape the two defenders and take it the final 30 yards into the end zone. A tremendous play by back at that time of Evangel Alabaster. So instead it comes back. It'll cost them five yards, but nonetheless, nice looking highlight from Murphy to Baggett. Murphy's looking at himself going, I can't believe I did all that for nothing. Had a yeah. highlight real play, probably one of the greatest catches I've ever had in my life. And it's all for naught. It turns totally into, erased. Turns into a five yard loss. <laughs> so Murphy now will take a knee. And that will be the end of the first. So we will take a break. Let the teams get a little water here on this beautiful afternoon. It's been Murphy. Murphy's Law prevails here at Burgess Snow Field, as you see. The senior quarterback from Evangel Alabaster putting on a show here in this game so far. 13-0, Lightning lead back with more of the 2016 Gridiron Challenge in just a moment. County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Oxford Secure Storage has now expanded with over 140 units. Oxford Secure Storage now has the largest selection of climate controlled units in the area. All sizes, both climate and non-climate controlled units are available with state of the art amenities. All access ways are paved and under 24 hour high tech surveillance. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff will help you through the entire rental process. Come see for yourself the extra measures Oxford Secure Storage takes for your security. Beautiful look there at Houston Cole Library. One of the icon figures here on the campus of Jacksonville State University. I don't know that I spent as much time there as I needed to back in the day, John. I spent time there, but I was the, the time I spent there, I was actually probably reading about football. Yeah, yeah. That, back that. in the days before the internet. Yes. Younger folks can't comprehend that. No. When, when you had to go there to read, if you wanted to read a newspaper, you had to go there to read the newspaper. So I would spend a lot of time there. I'm going to show what a football nerd I really am. Mm -hmm. I spent many days in there reading papers in Mobile and Montgomery and Huntsville because that's the only way you could get them back in the right. 80s. And uh, reading about high school football, two or three days late from around the state to catch up. And, and uh, so that's, that's my football nerd story. Other than that, reading about football at the Houston Cole Library, I don't think I spent any other time there doing actual academic work. They had something called a microfilm or something like that where you could go back. And this and was uh, actually, yeah. the new, you could go in there and you could get the Mobile Press Register. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, the actual newspaper right. that was delivered there right. that they subscribed to. And you could go in there and you could read like Saturday's paper mm -hmm. with had all the football write-ups from the games in Mobile. Uh, on, on probably Tuesday or Wednesday they right, had it. Right. So I would wait till about Thursday and go over there and spend two or three hours and read all the newspapers in the state. We are telling our age, John. We are telling our age for sure. Good look there. The Evangel cheerleaders is they are keeping their – Troops inspired. They've had a lot to cheer about here in the first. And Micah Murphy really has put on a show. But uh, both sides of the football, this team has really performed well here in the in the first part of this ball game. They have been razor sharp. We have a a uh, a two minute uh, break between halves. There, as we said, they're treating this as not really quarters, but halves. We'll actually change possession and kind of start all over as if we were kicking off a second half. So. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. And even though at the end of that last quarter, so to speak, Evangel Alabaster had the football and had it on first down, this is like a half. So the ball is going to go over now to Evangel Montgomery. And we'll start, in essence, a new half at the 35. Lions trying to find something uh, to work on and build on offensively. And see what Evangel Alabaster defense, as we said, looked to be in midseason form. They have really not allowed 
a lot of breathing room for the Lions here in the first. Alpert this time gives it off. Here we go. It's Jones. He'll break two tackles. Bring it out to the 45 and fight his way out to the 47, 48-yard line before the ball pops loose. But that's his best run here in this ball game. As you see, Zion Jones, good-looking athlete. 5'10", 203, only a sophomore, John. This guy, we may hear a lot about this guy before his, day, his days are done. Physical football player. Took a lot of licks in there and just kept churning and going, putting the ball out. The ball did come loose, but referee Ronnie Henderson over here on the side saying that he was down and a nice pickup really the best offensive play by far that we've seen from Evangel Montgomery in this game against Evangel Alabaster. Ronnie Henderson my former offensive line coach he he's chewed on officials long enough so now he gets an opportunity to be on the other side of the law I guess. Good run that time on the left side and all of a sudden Evangel Montgomery Lions able to find some running room good run by Jones there. Jones hitting the right side for about 10 yards and now hits the left side this time for about another eight yards or so. So a second down and short situation by far in this game. The best looking offensive plays we've seen so far from Evangel Montgomery. Alpert up under center. He'll give to the fullback. That's a good run right up the gut. First down yardage. Tough running by Greg Taylor. And that'll move the chains. So Evangel out of Montgomery putting together a good little drive here. Taylor 5'8", 205. Spark a fire plug there. This run the little short fullback blast play. Picks up the first down and a whole lot more. And Evangel Montgomery got something going here. Nice drive. Looks like they've gone to more of a tight formation. Trying to test the inside. That time Jones will fight forward. Good stop in there by Luke Moore once again. Right, Tommy. They have changed their offensive philosophy here in this second half as compared to the first half. They were trying to get outside the first time and just could not do anything. And right now, I think they've decided to line up and just run straight at, as you mentioned, let's run straight at this Evangel Alabaster middle of that defense and see what we can do. And so far, they've been very effective. And now they go to a single set in the backfield with Jones back there. One, two, three. Second down at about six. Alpert gives it off. That's the fullback. He's fighting forward and will take it down to about the 31. Close to first down yardage. That's Lloyd on the carry. Yes, yes. Or check that. That is Taylor on the carry, actually. Yeah. I said I said we've had three different names. I said he was Jones, and uh, it was actually Taylor. But another big pickup. And right now they're just kind of grinding this Evangel Alabaster team in the middle of that defense, picking up eight, picking up ten, picking up five, six. Uh, by far their best looking drive of the afternoon. And you saw there on America's first uh, replay some great blocking up front. Bobble on this handoff on the exchange. And who comes out of there with it? Evangel Alabaster's got it. Big number 61 as he will bring it in. And that is Jordan Bailey gets the recovery. Just the exchange not there. You see Jones just never got that football. Bailey, right place, right time. He'll get the recovery, and that stops what was a really good drive by the Lions. All Bailey had to do really was fall on the football right there at his feet, fell on it, and that snuffs out what was a good-looking drive for Evangel Montgomery. The last time that Evangel Alabaster had the ball, they only took over with 15 seconds to go in the half, so they, in essence, kind of took a knee and ran the half out. So before that, they had two drives and two touchdowns. Let's see what they can do here on what is in, it's essentially their third possession. Murphy keeper all the way cuts it back. He's got a gap goes far side. Murphy far sideline inside the 30 and he will take it to the house. A great run by Micah Murphy who showed some incredible vision there to cut it back against the grain and then kicked into another gear and outran everybody to the to the uh, corner of the end zone. A 68 yard touchdown run from Micah Murphy. He's in midseason form. He really is. He goes into the heart of the middle of the defense, and you mentioned his vision. Seeing that the defenders were in the middle, he decided to cut it outside and then outran four Evangel Montgomery defenders to the end zone. We've seen a lot of toughness from him. We've seen a lot of speed from him. And now we're going to see him. He's a great place kicker as well. Going to kick the extra point here. 
This one is up, and it is right through there. 20 to nothing, the lead. As you see Murphy take it left, but the field is his canvas, and he cuts it back and finds the real estate to the far side and turns the corner out, runs everybody into the end zone, and he has put on a show here today. As we said, coming in, about 2,600 yards for that young man last year. Not hard to figure out that Tony Sarah Ford scoring drive here. Just one play, 68 yards, 29 seconds off the clock, and it's a 20 to nothing lead for the Lightning. Evangel Alabaster technically four possessions, but, but really three. So we said that last possession before the end of the half was only 15 seconds on the clock. So they have been scoring at will against Evangel Montgomery. In essence, three possessions and three touchdowns, a 20 to nothing lead. You know, in the game that Evangel Montgomery had before this game against Kingwood Christian out of Alabaster, it was all Evangel Montgomery. But now in this game, the tables have kind of turned, Tommy, and it's now all Evangel Alabaster from what we've seen. And again, offensively, a good drive going the last time for Evangel Montgomery, snuffed out by a fumble. We're going to reset the play clock here. Let's see if they can continue to do what they did on that last drive, and that's run the ball straight out of Angel Alabaster. Looks like going to go with Gill in the backfield, along with Taylor, and back to the I formation with a couple of splits to the near side. They will hand it up the middle this time. The Lightning able to knife through there, and a good stop on the inside, and that is Nathan Brasher, sophomore defensive tackle. He comes out of there with a shoe as he has a souvenir after that play. Brasher, Carson, Adair also in there as well. A little bit more depth. Not a lot of players. These are small schools, but only about 19 or so players over on the Evangel Montgomery side. A few more over here on the Evangel Alabaster side. Looks like they may be dressing out uh, 30 players or so, something like that, 30 to 35. So a little bit more depth for Evangel Alabaster. It is a uh, it's a nice day, but still a little bit of heat, even though it's not a hot day by any stretch. We are playing on turf, and that does generate heat, so it's it's warmer than it feels down there on the playing surface. You know, and one thing, a lot of folks in spring, you have to work so long on fundamentals and things like that, you don't get a lot of conditioning. Middle screen set up, and it's going to be caught by Jones. Jones shakes a defender, 40-yard line, 45. He'll stiff arm and bring it close to midfield, actually into midfield, and a late flag comes tumbling in from behind. I wonder if this might be a face mask here. He gave a stiff arm. We look at the replay here. Cuts outside. Let's and wait then and see. Jones right here. We'll, we'll see what happens. Angle. Yeah, it looks like he may have. It's hard uh, to tell right there. I don't see a face mask. It's just I'm a stiff sure. arm. Let's see the indication. Block in the back. It could be back behind the play. I, I thought it, uh, it landed at the uh, feet of one of his blockers after the play, and I believe that's going to be the call. So the biggest play of the game so far for Evangel Montgomery is going to be nullified by that block in the back. So that will move it all the way back to the 37-yard line. Penalties and turnovers are always killers, and a turnover snuffed out that last drive, and then the biggest offensive play you've had in this game gets wiped out by a penalty. So mistakes right now, definitely hurting Evangel Montgomery. A lot of success in the first game offensively, but here in the second, Evangel Alabaster playing some great defense. Alpert throws it out to a good throw caught by Jones. Jones midfield, 45. He will take it all the way inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Stopped out there by Nate Arvizu. But a good play by Zion Jones. Zion Jones uh, made a great pass reception and run after the pass. Yards after catch were big on the last play, wiped out by the penalty. This time it stands. Another outstanding catch and another nice job of running with the football and picking up a bunch of additional yards all the way outside uh, the 30-yard line now. Alpert going to keep it left side. He's got the corner, 25, and will step out of bounds. After a gain of about 14 yards, that will move it inside the 20. Looks like to the 17-yard line. Again, the zone read, great read by Alpert. And just able to pick up great yardage on the left side. Sets up first down and 10. Another good drive, and the Lions 
After a shaky start in the uh, first part, here in the last couple of drives, have been able to find some success offensively. First two drives not picking up anything. Last two drives via both running the football straight at them and then with the passing game getting some yards. Alpert tries it again, has success again. Looking for the corner of the end zone, and he'll find it. This time the right side for Aaron Alpert and the sophomore QB able to find his way into the end zone doing his Micah Murphy impression. Good run by Alpert there to get Evangel Montgomery on the board. You see he read his blocks well, and once he saw it develop to the right side, just outran everybody. So good job there by Alpert. It's like Evangel maybe. Montgomery's going to go for two here, Tom. Gill in the backfield, back behind Alpert. As they will look in the flats, throws it out there, catches made, good throw to Jones. And that's one thing I was going to mention a little bit earlier. Alpert has looked very good throwing the ball to the left. Uh, a really couple has. of good passes there. Uh, one out there to Jones to get the big gainer that came back, but he has looked uh, really good. And so Alpert, not a shabby quarterback at all. And, and Jones uh, really not able to get anything established in the running game at this time. But uh, certainly in the passing game, Zion Jones was a big part of that. And again, there's the touchdown. Alpert. Nice, really a jog into the end zone. A lot of green space there. He took advantage of it and just strolled into the end zone. So a nice answer by Evangel Montgomery as they've cut the lead down to 20 to 8. 423 remaining in this matchup. And then Kingwood and Evangel Alabaster will be next on the the ticket here this afternoon or this morning we should say have an all alabaster matchup coming and then after that uh, Handley and Jacksonville will play each other and already a ton of Handley fans here it's more than an hour away from the kickoff of their game and they are here and excited to be playing at JSU Stadium Larry Strain has breathed a new life into that Handley program you see Murphy able to escape a couple, but as he is tracked down from behind, Oakley Williams able to bring him down. That's the first time they've really been able to lay a hand on Micah Murphy. He has dealt them some misery, but that time able to corral him and in essence a sack for a loss of two that time. You see Hanley across the way over there about ready to get out here and <laughs> warm up. Not realizing they've got another game to wait. There's still another game to come before Hanley can come out. So they're eager. This is the first time I believe that Hanley has played here in the Gridiron Challenge. So they're excited to play. I think this will be the first appearance that Hanley's had here at Burgess Snow Stadium. Murphy gives it off up the middle. That's Baggett. Not a whole lot there. Banjo Montgomery playing a lot better here in the second on both sides of the football. They have been able to really step it up. And I think that they, they, they challenge themselves at that break. And uh, they have looked a lot better here in this second one. And it could be one of those things we talked about where, you know, Evangel Alabaster comes out there fresh and uh, Evangel Montgomery had just played an entire half and maybe just uh, that at the very beginning of the game played a factor. Flag on the play. Looks like movement in the interior there. Just watching Hanley come in to the northeast wow. corner of the stadium. That is a pretty impressive looking football team coming up from Roanoke that's walking in right here. They, they have got some size and good looking athletes over there. That's a good looking squad coming in here to JSU Stadium. The year before Larry Strain arrived at Hanley, I had an opportunity to, to see the Tigers play in week 10, and I think they dressed out less than 30. Larry Strain came in, met with most of the kids in the school, especially your guys, and talked to them, and they bought into the program he's going to build. And I believe they're going to dress out uh, upwards of 60 at this point. They have really brought in a lot of kids and a lot of participation. The excitement is high in Roanoke, Alabama. Jones able to track down Murphy there on third down. As he's doing it on both sides of the football, big stop there. And 
And you can credit that totally to a coverage sack. Excellent coverage by the Evangel Montgomery secondary. And for the second time on this drive, they were able to corral Micah Murphy for a sack. And this is the first punt we've seen by Evangel Alabaster. So great coverage in the secondary. The classic coverage sack that time by Evangel Montgomery. 2.05 left on the clock. Evangel Montgomery with a chance to get on the board again before this one wraps up. And it was Kingwood Christian down in the end zone as well. They came prepared. They brought both their home and visitor jerseys. The first game that they played against Evangel Montgomery, they were wearing blue jerseys. Mm -hmm. And now in the off game, they've gone and switched to the white jerseys. So they were well prepared to be both home and visitor today coming up from uh, Alabaster. A couple of split outs will go either way. Aaron Alpert. Another flag on the play. I think an illegal substitution is what the uh, official on the far side is signaling in. Got one that's going to have to check out. I believe they were had 12 on the field at that point, and they did. It's not like it's not like there's a lot of could be a lot of confusion on that sideline because they no. only have seven or eight guys you, over you, there. You count uh, <laughs> the guys in the sideline with you. You should be able to figure that one. What have they got? Three, six, eight players dressed I think, out. I think eight players. I so think nineteen. Got nineteen was what they dressed. But nineteen pretty good players as Alpert rolls out to the left side. He's in trouble. Slips back. Gets a block and he escapes somehow to the thirty-five yard line. And he'll get a gain of five on that play. Alpert with a great escape. That should have been a coverage sack going the other way. All kind of blue jerseys back there to try to knock him down. But credit Albert for getting out of there. That's only a six-yard gain. But he's, that could have been a, easily a 10-yard loss. Absolutely. Great to get positive yardage. We're under a minute and a half remaining in this one. Aaron Alpert, sophomore quarterback. He'll take it, drop straight back. Got pressure, flips it out there, caught by Gill. Gill's got some real estate. He's got a first down and more. He'll take it close to midfield. Good run by Anthony Gill. As you see here, just a little flare pass. Safety valve, and Gill knows what to do with the football once he gets it. And he'll bring it out and rattle the chains to midfield. Tommy Evangel Montgomery has really found something with his short passing game, finding the running backs in the flat out of the backfield. This is the key to the last drive that they scored upon, and they are doing it again on this drive, looking for those backs coming out of the backfield. This time, Alpert pumps it, going to keep it up the middle. Breaks a couple of tackles, but he'll bring it down to the 45-yard line. He went with the pump fake, going to try it deep. And instead, the pressure gets to him. You see the pump right there. And then the pressure's there, so he just tucks it under and gets what he can. And a good run, but also a good open field tackle made out there by Davis Windsor. Timeout call. Timeout call by Evangel Montgomery, 45 seconds to go. Uh, basically in the game, Tommy, because we don't have kickoffs, we don't have onside kicks. This game might could get pretty interesting here if they were able to score here and able to do an onside kick, which they can't. But uh, nonetheless, a good effort here by Evangel Montgomery trying to score here in these last 45 seconds. They really played well here in the second period for sure. Second down at five. More importantly, though, 45 seconds left on the clock. Plenty of football coming your way. Burgess Snowfield throughout the day today. As we will, following this game, have... Kingwood and Evangel Alabaster as they will square off here. Evangel Montgomery, they will be done. They'll be over with before lunchtime today and back on the road to Montgomery. After the King, after the all Alabaster game coming up between Kingwood and Evangel Alabaster, we'll get into Jacksonville and Hanley. Two very good 4A teams that I think are going to make a lot of noise in Absolutely. 4A football coming up this fall. Albert drops back, got a little bit of pressure. Now he's going to look long down the middle of the field, throws it for Jones and knocked away, almost picked off. Breaking on the football that time was Chase Callahan. 
He knocks it away, but he realizes he could be on the big screen in the end zone if he hangs on to that one. You see the frustration. As he read that one beautifully, had a good jump on the football. Yeah, Callahan, a nice timing that time. Just perfect timing. Couldn't track it down. And he had a lot of Burgess snow turf right in front of him, that's for sure. Third down, about five, 38 seconds on the clock. Alpert back to pass. Looking, goes out in the flats toward Jones. He'll make the catch at the 23 and be butted out of bounds across the way, but he'll take it down to the 16-yard line. And again, in this quarter, Evangel Alabaster, Tommy, they have just had no solution for the passing game to the backs coming out of the backfield. As we've seen Zion Jones coming out of the backfield, uh, Anthony Gill coming out of the backfield, even the, the big guy, Greg Taylor. They have had a, a tremendous amount of success throwing to the backs out of the backfield. And Albert has shown a, a really good arm. It, it's really his first start. Uh, he did not play quarterback last year, but it's been impressive here, especially throwing the football down the field. If they can get that going with the running of Jones, this team will have a pretty good season as well. Good throw, and this time Jones can't hang on. Alpert with a great throw just over the stretch of the linebacker who had dropped into coverage. And you see right here, just blocked the vision of Jones momentarily, and he couldn't bring that one in. Beautiful throw. Albert has been really good. And I'm telling you, Jones, we, we thought he was a good running back. Tommy, he might be a better wide receiver. They've gone right now just lining him up in the slot over there. Mm -hmm. They've taken him out of the backfield. They've pretty much emptied the backfield, a couple of H-backs in there, and put him as a slot wide receiver, and he's been open every time. Alpert going to be tripped up, tried to slip through a defender there. But that will bring him down, and a timeout called by Evangel Montgomery. So the Lions trying to get on the board here with 11 seconds left. 20 to 8 the score. Just wanting to get on the board and something more to build on after the spring. 11 seconds left on the clock. So what do you dial up here? Well, I think you uh, you got 11 seconds. You're sitting on about the 18 yard line. So you probably have probably have two plays. Most likely can't really run around much on this and have to get rid of the ball quick to get those two plays, but probably two shots of the end zone here. Like I said, we've seen Alpert, especially here in the second, throw very well to his left. And uh, that's where he's had a lot of success. So we'll see if he continues to try to work that route. Yeah, Nathan Gober from TV24 was up here in the booth earlier, and he was showing me the live stream. So the uh, if you are out and about today on this beautiful Saturday and you want to catch up and watch the games, you got people outside the area that want to see some of these teams, TV24.TV streaming live right now. The catch is made inside and going into the end zone. Nice throw and catch there. And that is Carlos Brown, the sophomore wide receiver. Alpert delivers it on the money. Brown cuts in, makes the catch you see there in front of the defender and breaks the tackle and goes into the end zone. Great throw and we pull it in for Brown, and he gets his highlight of the day, finds his way in the end zone, cuts it to 20-14, to and an extra point coming up for the Evangel Montgomery Lions. Triton Taylor, sophomore kicker, gets him a kick, and it falls to the left side. So 20-14. to and that will be the final ball game there. Well played by both sides. You saw Evangel Alabaster get off to a quick start, hitting on all cylinders. But Evangel Montgomery able to, to come back as they battle their way back. Got folks working on their tans out here at Burgess Snowfield. Good look there at Evangel Alabaster. They're not finished. They will shake hands here, and then they'll... Get started up again, taking on Kingwood. 
John, I'm, I'm going to tell you, a lot of good athletes on the field for both these teams. I was impressed by both of those teams. Of course, we had we had seen Evangel Montgomery in the first game against Kingwood Christian. Very impressed in that game as they had their way with Kingwood. And they got off to kind of a slow start in this one, but the resiliency, these guys coming back, and, you know, it really is a, a tale of two halves. The first half was all Evangel Alabaster, but I think the second quarter was all Evangel Montgomery. Right. I think you're exactly right. And Micah Murphy, a great quarterback, you see all his big play capabilities, and he can make a lot of good things happen. But as Evangel Montgomery leaves the field, I'm going to tell you, I think they found their quarterback in Alpert. He really showed a lot to me in the second half uh, or this, you know, that uh, matchup there. And they've got some talent as well. So we're going to check down now and uh, find out some of the other uh, ideas and some of the things uh, that the Evangel coaching staff saw. We've got Chase Robinson down on the field. Chase, take it away, buddy. Thanks, Tommy. Uh, coach, uh, wrapping up your spring today. First of all, how would spring go for you all? You know, spring was great. Obviously, from the offset, we knew we got to come here, so that kept everybody up the whole time. So we're all excited. I couldn't ask for a better spring. It was great. Uh, talk about today some things you saw uh, you all have improved on through the springs and then some things you want to work on. After well, we're definitely snake bit from the front. We we lost our center, our quarterback, and our guard, you know, kind of during before we even got here. So we're, uh, you know, and then we lost two guys just then. So it's like trying to piece up when you only have 20 guys. So other than that, though, you know, we definitely wanted to establish a couple things. We did that, obviously got them on film so we can work on next fall, you know. Uh, you got some players, uh, number one, uh, Zion Jones, players like that tremendous athletes. Oh yeah, Zion Jones came over to us and transferred in January and he did exactly what we were hoping he could do and, uh, and on both sides of the ball. So we're excited about that. Uh, Oakley Williams stood up and uh, he's our team captain and, and he, uh, I don't know, we didn't come back that all way just then, but he kind of led that charge and, uh, and I was real proud of that, you know. Uh, well, thank you coach and good luck in the fall. Yeah, appreciate it guys. Thanks. All right, thanks a lot, Chase. And again, uh, Coach Wadley has to be pleased with the resiliency of his team that they showed here this afternoon or uh, in, in both matchups. They were very explosive in the first game, but that man right there, Micah Murphy, he is big play in waiting, but also Brown tries to answer on the other side. So a couple of good ball teams doing battle here, and that continues throughout the day. Keep it locked all day right here on the 2016 Gridiron Challenge right here on TV24. Football continues in a moment.